and uh, we're going to be talking about uh, elections from the polling perspective. So there are three ways to change the world. You know what they are? Money. <laughs> money, money, and money. Money. Voting. Voting. Voting is a good one. Money, I don't know if you brought any, but I don't think we're going to pass on the plate because I'd probably be disappointed. But voting is probably the single greatest opportunity to change the world. You speak up, and believe me, we have an obligation to speak up. It's an abdication of all that's great about America if we don't speak up, because it's something people fight for. People come a long distance to get to a place where they can vote. And it's one of the most powerful things, things you can do is to vote and send a message to City Hall saying these are the things that matter to us. Whatever it is, whatever it is, it's up to you to say what's important to you, but it's up to us to speak up. So one of the simplest things we can do is vote. What's another thing we can do to change the world? There you go. Run as a candidate. Pick an issue and say, this issue matters and I'm going to stand up and represent my family, my neighbors, my community on this issue. Whether it's public safety, thank you very much, Elliot, all over public safety. Uh, we've got folks that are all over public space. You're a public sp a green space uh, candidate, right? Parks, parks and recreation. So we've got candidates that represent different issues which gives the voters something to vote for. Not vote against, but vote for. It's easy to say no, it's really hard to be aspirational because you know what, it takes some work to stand up and say, let's do something, let's stand for something. So, so running as a candidate is a great way to change the world. Some people are not only voters, they're candidates, so more power to them, eh? And the third way you can change the world is what? Be a lobbyist. <laughs> Aren't many of them, and here, here's the deal. There's a lot of voters, and there's a lot of candidates, and the least we can do is to support the polling locations so people can come and vote for those candidates. And so that's what we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to talk about how to run a polling location. So what you're doing, and I hope you're voting, I know some of you are running, but when you take a little bit of time and set up that polling location, you're doing something really absolutely critical as far as us making LA a greater city. And I really believe this, and I know you do too because you're here. So here's what we're going to do. We're just going to break it down in steps. And by the way, if you're in and you're in all the way from the beginning to the end, more power to you. And if you've got some friends that don't want to come to this meeting but might want to drop by for a couple of hours, there's a place for them also. So very simple, anyone can be a poll worker. They're going to be 16 years of age, so that's really not anyone, right? They're going to be 16. They're handling some documents, and really what we want to do is we want to make it easy to vote and hard to cheat. And one of the simplest things we can do, easy to vote, hard to cheat. One of the simplest things we can do is we can demonstrate that it's hard to cheat, which means we'll staff things in such a way that when people see it, they have confidence that the process is good. They won't have any doubts. They won't see ballots moving. They won't see the box, the ballot box unattended. They won't see people wandering in and wandering out. They'll have confidence, and that goes a long way. Community policing, Elliot will tell you, is all about confidence. People are confident, and that's when things start to happen. The electoral process, people believe in it when they have confidence in the outcome. So you're playing a critical role here. We, we simply ask that everyone's 16 years of age, and there's really a role for everybody. We also ask that everyone can uh, speak English and, and follow instructions in English. We love if they speak other languages, because there's 95 neighborhood councils. In Hollywood and Western, close to your neighborhood, there's literally 100 languages spoken in the East Hollywood area. The same street is actually Thai Town and Little Armenia. The same street. They didn't even get to their own streets. It's so, there's so many languages spoken, and around the corner is little Bangladesh. So we love having folks that speak different languages, because we can get translators for the, you know, uh, we'll have translators for the uh, languages that the neighborhood councils picked, but nobody knows the neighborhood councils better than the people from that neighborhood. So that's the second thing, is that we love neighborhood council folks that just know the neighborhood, because your bylaws are all different. Some neighborhood councils, for example, I don't, I don't know why I'm going to pick on Silver Lake, but you're right here, right? In Silver Lake, sometimes it's both sides of the street. Other times, it's down the middle. In Greater Wilshire, it's behind the houses they split, not the streets. 
which is interesting too, because I don't really pay attention to the people on the other side of the fence behind me, but the people across the street I know well, right? Mm -hmm. I saw hi every morning. <coughs> so neighbor councils are all unique. Sunland, uh, 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 Sun Valley area, remember there was the, the big boundary <coughs> dispute? You're in the wrong neighborhood. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. It's because you know better than anyone where the boundaries are. And a lot of streets are just, um, there's, pa there's, there's uh, invisible street, paper streets. They, they, they're on the map, but you can't find them in, in, in real life. Who knows that? You know that. So you're able to help folks when they come to the polling location. But in, in a nutshell, um, we would love anyone to participate. And there's a couple of great reasons for this, too. Oftentimes, it's how the neighborhood council system is first experienced by people. They come and volunteer for a day. Maybe. You might export some of this wonderful neighborhood councilness to your neighborhood. And that's a great thing. We have folks from around the world that come. Um, tomorrow's the 19th. Tomorrow we'll have 23 people from around the world. The State Department sends people. You know, they want to know about grassroots democracy. They want to know about civic engagement. We had someone from the Ukraine that was in charge of the anti-corruption bureau or whatever. And he came and wanted to know about neighborhood councils because there's no, there's no greater check. Checks. Check? There's no greater oversight than from the people. You know, if you think about the mayor of um, New York City, he came from the public advocate. He came from an oversight position. And it's a quite powerful position if we step up to it. Um, anyway, so uh, we love to have folks that are new to the system. It's a great way to get involved. So anyway, that's in a nutshell. Um, we, when we set up the polling place, we want someone to greet because oftentimes people go to the wrong neighborhood council polling place. Life's confusing. There's 87 fire stations on the way. We stopped at every single one of them and said, are you at number 87? And it's, it's you know, there's a, so people, no, I'm kidding, I didn't. <laughs> but, you know, life gets confusing, and sometimes people go to the wrong neighborhood <coughs> council because they often qualify for more than one. But it's really important that we have a greeter up front that can um, make sure they're in the right place and then give them specific instructions to the registration table. So, um, Sometimes folks don't show up with the proper documentation. And there's an immediate fork in the road. Some of your neighbor councils are self-affirmation, which means if you show up and tell me that you're qualified to vote, thank you very much, let's vote. Other neighbor councils want documents. And so if you show up and say that you're voting for the homeowner seat, and you have to be a homeowner to vote for that seat, you have to show me something that says you're a homeowner. Okay, these are choices that neighbor council meet, uh, makes. I think Silver Lake's uh, documentation, correct? Well, someone's going to show up. In Chatsworth, we had people that showed up with horses. Right? They rode right up to the poles. In riding gear, I bet they didn't bring the deed to the house. You know what I mean? They may not, not, not have come prepared, but they may have remembered, hey, it's election day, let's go vote. So if they get there, no harm, no foul. Let's vote provisionally. Okay? Because I'm not going to argue with you. You didn't bring any, that's okay. So provisionally means that you'll vote and you'll have three days to produce documentation. Like you're looking for your purse, you're like, oh, I can't find my doc, I can't find my, I, I don't have my ID. That's okay, let's vote. So um, the, fo the fork in the road is some of you are uh, gonna be working polls that are documentation, some are self-affirmation. Some neighborhood councils had vote by mail and if, they had vote by mail, their self-affirmation, but when they come in to a vote by mail neighborhood council, you'll want to check to make sure they didn't already get a ballot. So, hey, what's your name? Hi, Nina. Let's just look over here. Hey, Nina, it says that we sent you a ballot. Did you get it? And Nina goes, oh my, yes, it's on the kitchen table. <laughs> well, you know, Nina, um, I'd love to give you two ballots, but you've already got one, so what we'll do is we'll vote provisionally. Or, you could give me that ballot, right? And maybe you filled it out and changed your mind because you went to the form and you weren't that impressed with your first choice and you want to change your mind. You can do that, you can surrender it and I'll give you another one. So you see, when there's a vote by mail element, there's a little bit of helping folks, right? And, and at one neighbor council, the first person I spoke to, I said, oh, you know, I'm doing the demo. Hey, here's how we do it. Oh, hi, Nina, Nina you got a ballot. Oh yeah, I forgot, <coughs> right, the first one out. Forgot, or not, but anyway, I don't know. Nina. But <laughs> so you see, we're going to be helping folks. 
And keep in mind that you can vote in the neighborhood council if you <coughs> live here, yeah. work, work. Here. On, property. on property, rent, rent. <coughs> have a business, an interest. an interest, a community interest. So this year, we've had many terms in the past, but this year it's called community interest, which means that um, if you find a community interesting, <laughs> wow, what an interesting neighborhood. I've always wanted to vote here. So here's community interest in a nutshell. You participate. Huh? Maybe I can do that. There you go. So you participate in the community somehow, and you can demonstrate that. Okay? Now keep in mind, if it's factual-based, you'll. I mean, if it's um, uh, self-affirmation, you'll tell us and you'll give us the address. Okay? So uh, Cindy, who's not here tonight, sat down the other day and tried to think of all of the ways she's involved in the neighborhood. And she came up with 22 different ways, right? So there's Job's Daughters, Sir Optimus, Chamber of Commerce, you know, and she started thinking of all of the ways she's involved. And keep in mind, we want to make it easy to vote, hard to cheat. So if you're really involved, let's talk about how you're involved, okay? And I know you're the hardest working guy up in Sun Valley area, right? You're probably involved a few different ways. And you can probably, if we think about it for a moment, figure out a way to help me help you figure out how you qualify. But it has to be with an address in the neighborhood. So who belongs to the Sierra Club? How wonderful, huh? It's going to have to be a little better than that, because that qualifies you to vote in the United States of America. Yes, it does. Right? But are you doing anything here in Mission Hill? And if you say, well, of course I am. That's where our chapter meets. Really? What's the address? We meet at the Denny's. Now, keep in mind, I don't know the address of the Denny's, or Subway, or the Hometown Buffet, which apparently I'm a fan of, right? I don't know the address, but I do know where it is. So there'll be a map at the counter so that you can help me help you find, where is the, um, where's your church? I mean, who knows the address? You, you know, the things you go to, you don't know the address of the school or the church, but you certainly know the name. And so if you brought me the program from the church and it said that you're in the choir, in fact, you're the choir master. Well, more power to you. Thank you very much for making music. There's a lot of ways for you to show us who you are. Are you old enough to vote? Unless it's the, well, some have um, a senior category, some have a youth category, and often there's just a basic minimum, like you have to be 14, 16, or 18 to vote. So you'll, who are you? Are you, uh, the, qualified by age, and then how do you qualify to vote for that seat? In West Hills, everyone votes for everybody, right? Yes. Right. So that's it's 17 at-large seats? 25. 12. 20, 20, 20, 20, 25. Yeah, 25. 25. I might run, huh? With 12 or 13. Yeah. So uh, at West Hills, uh, by the way, you'll powwow with your um, uh, your uh, poll, polling um, manager so he, can go, the, he or she can go over the specifics for that neighborhood council, but in West Hills, it's open. Other neighborhood councils, it's very specific. So in, um, in Silver Lake, they have seven regions. Seven regions. So seven you're in one, large. you're in two, you're in three, you're in four, you're in five. In some neighborhood councils, uh, they have a region, but they have a, a resident person in that region, a business person in that region, a community interest in that region. Sometimes you might get there and realize you can only vote for two categories. So you see, it's confusing for us. We have neighbor council boards where people still aren't sure, what seat are you in? You know what I mean? What seat am I in? The seats all look the same, but they're actually, people are sitting in different seats. So we'll be helping voters navigate this journey. The best polling places are polling places that have something way fun outside when we're done. Some of them have a candidate corral out front. So you can chat with the candidates far away from the polling place if you choose. You can come vote. And then you can go outside and you can meet some folks that have committees and sign up for Elliott's Public Safety Committee. Or you can sign up for your Park Space Committee. Or have a barbecue. And it, are you going to have a barbecue? Yes. Excellent. So Mission Hills had a barbecue. The poll workers were very happy. It was a very slow polling place because half the poll workers were at the barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was happy and that's what counts, right? So. Um, we have a lot of rules, and some of the rules are for a reason. So if, um, if you and I were hanging out at the booth and talking, right, that's kind of against the rules. But what if I was helping you 
with the, 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 the ballots? What if I was translating for you? Or what if I was helping someone? What if a family member wanted to help someone who had some difficulty with mobility? And that would be a little different. So we use some common sense here. Um, the cell phones, it's just inappropriate. I mean, it's, it's a quiet room. But here's the deal. If someone can't get into the building, we'll actually go to the, Curb. to the curbside. So they'll call a number, which we'll put out front. They can just dial that number, and then we run out there. But we don't just run out with a box of ballots. We, <laughs> because then someone will go, hey, you know, I, I, I was way confident up until I saw Kevin running outside with a ballot box and a box of ballots, and then come back and declare himself the winner. <laughs> that right? So there's a bit of a process. You'll announce it before you leave. You know, I got a curbside. You'll walk in, say, I got a curbside. You'll exchange it for a ballot. And here's the deal it's, very, it's, it's a really simple process. There's a greeter, we register. You exchange the registration for a ballot. At the end of the day, the number of registrations must match the number of ballots. You walk over to the ballot box. Give me that guarding the ballot box look. <laughs> so they'll vote, and there's someone watching you vote. Don't touch the ballot, let them put it in there, and thank them profusely, right, for supporting grassroots democracy as we know and love it in the city of Los Angeles. And then you can tell them, you know, there's some fun stuff outside. There's a barbecue, there's some neighbor, the, there's some committees that are showing you what they do. So maybe you'd like to sign up for the Planning and Land Use Committee or the um, Public Safety Committee and get involved. You cared enough to vote, don't let them get away, right? So sign them up for something. So here's the deal. Thank you for being here tonight. We're going to go over some details. So Glenn's going to walk you through it with a little more specificity. I had to practice that word. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and then Jose's going to show you what an election in a, in a box looks like. So that's what you would get, and then you would unpack it, and then go to work. So um, here's the thing. Um, Nancy's your volunteer coordinator for the city of LA. There's much more going on, and so we, we want to think beyond the ballot box. The relationships that you forge here. Are you going to be working in a, a neighboring neighborhood council? Yes. Okay, who's your, who did you uh, declare... Uh, North peace Hollywood treaty with North, North Hollywood Northeast. So you declared a peace treaty with North Hollywood Northeast. Yes. And you're going to go help them. Yes. And then they'll be mowing your lawn for. They'll be, they'll <laughs> be doing it next year. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll help you negotiate next time. It has a big lawn too, fruit trees and a little bit. Uh, so you know. But so some neighbor councils are uh, kind of working with their neighbors. You know, I'll help you if you help me. And that's kind of a cool thing. Some folks were meeting for the first time, and, and I really am. Uh, tickled that you're here. I think that's way cool. Um, while the rest of the world's coming here, it's great to have our neighbors because after all, we're the ones that work together when something happens. And we're the ones that work together when we want to make things happen. You know, So it, it'd, be, it'd be nice if we didn't only talk when there was a fire or a traffic jam. It'd be nice if we talked about, hey, what can we, what's the vision for this area look like? You know, And so I think that's a, a, an awesome experience. So here's the deal. There's a few ways to get in contact with us. You can email elections and empowerla.org, and Nancy will follow up with you. Unless it's a question about something else, and then she'll give it to, to someone else follow up on this call. But Nancy's uh, your coordinator, not just for this polling process, but afterwards, what do we do next? You can also um, call us at any time, 818-293-VOTE. So right now that goes to several people, and it goes to... Um, emails. On the day of the election, the great thing about that number is it'll go to someone that's at one of the polling places. And the third thing you can do is you can go to empowerla.org and click the elections page. And you can take your friends if you'd like to sign them up. And they can click the, um, the volunteer and they can just decide. You can look at the schedule of neighborhood councils and decide if any of them interest you. Is it a particular day? Is it a particular region? Um, are you guys trading with another neighborhood council? No? Yeah? But we're having the barbecue. Yeah, we're having okay. the barbecue. Okay. We want to make sure about that. How about Silver Lake? Are you trading with uh, neighbors? Uh, well, I'm going to also do one in Region 6. Who's that? Which? Los Feliz? Uh, that, no, oh, no. Not, not in, in. Oh. In, not, uh, in Region 6, meaning. Um, oh, what is it? MacArthur Park. MacArthur Park. Excellent. It's also a great way to. to um, <coughs> visit other parts of the city. I mean, Cindy was saying that she worked the Venice Neighborhood Council 
election, it was way cool because sometimes you get so used to how we do something that you forget there's uh, 95 different ways to run a neighborhood council. And so it's always an interesting experience to visit other neighborhood councils. And the IEAs can tell you that because you end up seeing a whole lot of great ideas, things we hadn't thought of because we're so busy with what we're doing. So anyway, without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen,